This is the construction phase of Antwerp Port House. In last week's presentation, we went through the process of the construction of pillars and bridge. In today's presentation, with an extension of last week, we will go over how the main steel structure is placed on top of the bridge and with the Virandel truss. Before going over to a specific process, first, what is Virandil truss? Virandil truss is composed of vertical components between the upper and lower sides of the truss. The upper and lower sides are parallel to each other and vertical supporting members connect the upper and lower sides. In other words, a structure member is not triangulated but form rectangular openings. The difference between Verandil truss and simple truss is the shape of the structure member and the type of joints. Simple truss has a triangular shape while Verandil truss has a rectangular shape. Furthermore, while simple truss has a pin joint and Verandil truss has a fixed joint. This fixed joint is a key element for Verandil truss's advantages. As I said before, Verandil truss is composed of fixed joints. On a simple truss, there are only pin joints, which leads to no reaction force against the bending moment. Therefore, diagonal beam is used to resist the bending moment. However, Verandil truss as a reaction force against the bending moment. So the rectangular shape could be formed with no diagonal beam. Therefore, the benefit of the Verandil truss is that equal amount of load could be resisted with less amount of material or beams used. This means more saving of money in materials. But a limitation of this Verandil truss is that the external load should be loaded on each pin at the same time to withstand the load. If not, the truss collapse. This means that equal amount of load should be loaded on each joint. Due to the lacking number of resources about the design of the Verandil truss used in Antwerp Port House, we evaluated and designed the trusses with the studies we did of the Verandil truss. As you can see in the model, the truss is a symmetry. At the left, there are four fixed H-beams and three fixed H-beams on the right. Understanding the principle of equal amount of load should be exerted on each joint, we evaluated that more load is applied on the left member of the truss than the right member. If you look carefully at our 3D model, you can notice there's a box between Verandil truss and the small part of the superstructure. Due to the complication in designing the moment connection in BIM, we simplified our model to easily demonstrate how the moment connection is connected on the truss structure. This is the model of applying only one part of the moment connection to show details of how two steel members are connected in our building. After placing the Verandil truss on top of the bridge, same material, which is fair-faced concrete, is used to create a wall around the truss. And the stairs are placed within the truss which allows people to move from the bridge to the superstructure. In the process of connecting the superstructure to the Verandil truss, through our research of the specifications of the Verandil truss and the superstructure, we concluded that bolt connection is used in connecting the steel members to each other. And within the bolt connection, Moment connection is used. It is also known as 
Rigid connection. Moment connection is basically connecting the steel members with bolts and it is to primarily carry moment loading. However, it is also usually designed to resist shear and exile loading as well. As it resists on three loadings, it is referred as rigid or fully restrained connections. There was not enough information of how the connection took place in the construction. So using the information we researched so far, we thought that more parts should have taken place to distribute the moment, exile, and shear loading. Until now, we went over of how the small Verindal truss compared to the size of the superstructure can withstand the 1500 ton of superstructure. Now we will go over the construction process of the main superstructure. From now on, let me explain how the main steel structure of the port house, which are the most striking and iconic structure, was built. The new building design called for steel structure to be erected above an existing and listed building on the same site said the port of Antwerp. In total, the new port house design is 12,800 square meters. 6,600 square meters are in the refurbished fire station and 6,200 square meters are in the extension. The maximum dimensions of the new building extension are 111 meter length, 24 meter widths, and 46 meter heights, which means 5 additional floors. The upper part of the building is constructed from 6 prefabricated steel modules. The module was laid with a sheet metal slab, and the column designed for the module was made of a brandil truss. If you look at the module, there is an empty space which was pre-filled in consideration of the passage through the panoramic elevator and stairs. Considering the final assembly of each module, the joint part of the truss connected vertically and diagonally was designed in advance to withstand the load from the upper module. The connection process of the modules was assembled in order from back to front on a port house. The structure is made up of 6 modules, each measuring about 50 meters long, 20 meters width, and 6 meters high. The first module weighed in at around 378 tons, while the other units ranged in weight from 170 to 265 tons. The total weight of the module is 1,500 tons. Now, let's take a closer look at how this module was transported and assembled. Manufactured by Victor via Steel Construction at its factory in Wonder Jam, in the port of Ghent, the modules were transported one by one to the construction site at the port of Antwerp by barge. Since the port house is surrounded by the sea, there was no problem in transporting the heavy prefabricated modules using barge. Therefore, there is no need to directly manufacture the module at the construction site. On arrival, the structures were rolled off the barge using SPMT before being lifted by cranes, which were owned and operated by heavy lifting specialist sirens. Before loading, the rope tied to the module was manually pulled by a person to precisely match the joint. Once installed, the unit were attached to one another using temporary joint. In the few months, Final welding work was carried out to join the pieces together permanently. When the connection was successful, the concrete was used to make floors for each floor, 
and then the side of the building were surrounded with grass panels, and the interior equipment was installed and construction was completed.